Welcome to the second game of the Clash Bash League quarterfinals between Chandler and John. I'm William Table and Legs, and I'm here with Kevin Smurf Murphy. Kevin, what's up? What's up? Kevin, John pulled ahead on Bravo. So now he gets to pull out Dromai against Chandler's. They chose Azalea. How is this matchup supposed mm -hmm. to go? Um, so Azalea, like Drom Dromai just needs a board. Or in CC, Dromai wanted to just get a board and just swing it every turn and say Azale Azalea can't efficiently clear dragons. Um, in a 20 health format, the Dromais tend to look a little bit more aggro, a little more scar for scar, blaze, rabble heavy yeah. uh, than they did in um, Constructed. Uh, Glory Seeker is oh, wow. really interesting. Oh, <laughs> it, okay. I'm seeing Sigil and Sweeping Blow. So this might be a little bit slower of a Dromai deck, but this also might just be a, a, a factor I see of card a, Yeah, pool. I see a Sink Below. Yeah, and Seeker's Mitts. Pitching a snatch away. So we're going to start with four Ash. So this is every Chromite <laughs> and every Asvali is live already. Rake the Embers is there, ready to go, and a pain. And this is because Azalea has no arrow, no way to attack. They can't even send the Fighting Spirit that's in their hands. They're going to get to hold on to this Fighting Spirit, Arsenal of the Lakes with Blood Rot, and pop the first dragon. But they need to pressure the Dromai's life total probably, potentially every turn. Rabble uh, to start the turn revealing a blaze is how Dromai wants to start these low health formats. So uh, Glory Seeker turn one is that kind of tech that I love to see in Clash. You get to see these mm. uh, lim equipment that you typically see in limited used in a construction constructive format, right? So Dromai never got to yep. see Glory Seeker in her limited format, obviously, uh, but yeah. getting to see her use that just like Azalea with Ragamuffins. I, th I think the equipment yeah. is really interesting. Yeah, the, the Glory Seeker is actually very akin to what Dromais would use Heliosmiter for in Limited. Oh, yeah. Um, because you could just pop, pop Heliosmiter on turn zero and make four Ash if you happen to have four reds or however many reds you had. And you could just do that to start the game. So it's doing the same thing. They even pop Seekers. Um, but like Azalea, Azalea had the popper for the Kyloria. The board is clear. Uh, they get to come back with 10 Dominate. 10 Dominate on, on hit one. All right, mm -hmm. it's an uphill battle. We've seen the, or it's 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 uphill from here, right? But we've seen the defensive side of this Dromai. I don't know. I think I we've think they're seen... just they seem to just be playing like the good efficient cards, right? So we've seen Sink Blow, but we've seen uh, Blaze Hedgehog. So yeah, the, so they they've got all the zero for fours, but we also did see them pitch an Oasis to that Kyloria, oh. which is gonna be interesting because uh, they do have. Some not necessarily more sideboard, not necessarily more efficient cards, but like the actual sideboard cards. Yeah. Um, Oasis is not was not super common in Dromai. Um, uh, dust up though to start the turn uh, with snaps up is is definitely not a bad way to start. You'll have an Ashwing ready to go uh, because of it. Blaze we knew from the Rabble reveal, and we're just going to put more zero for fours in front of them. Rake I, go up to four Ashwings. Yeah. Oh shoot, mm. that's really good. Um, I want to take a second. That's very good. And uh, thank our audience for coming out today. Gordon, uh, <laughs> love to have you. Um, and we see these Ashwings coming in. This is yeah. the kind of brutal part that uh, Dromite can do in a game. Yes, this is very difficult for Azalea to deal with. She basically can't ever send an arrow at one of them. It's just such a, such an inefficient play, and you just have to kind of go... Pick them off, like, if you have an Endless Arrow in a weird turn, or just pop them. Um, Lexi was fine with it because of Endless Arrow, uh, and also because of, what was the uh, arm piece? Hornet Sting. Yes. Um, but that's, bull, Bullseye Braces is too essential for Azalea on the turns where you need to go a little bit wide. Um, but the other option is Red in the Ledger. Could you see that being a sideboard piece? Or is it just too niche in that it only covers Dromai in a format like this? The so piece. it would. So Hornet Sting would only cover Dromai. It also has to reveal an arrow off the top of the deck. Oh, that's very and specific. And Zalia runs roughly half not arrows, so it uh, is unlike, much less reliable. Lexi. Unlike Lexi, who is running forty-five yeah. out of sixty. Yeah. Um, so it's much less reliable for Zalia than it is for Lexi. Um, the the other. Way, so you, you're pretty much reliant on poppers, 
and Red and the Ledger, and then killing Dromai before they can set up. So this is going to be one turn or two, depending on if this Red and the Ledger gets through. This is interesting. They're having a think here. It's uh... I think they were trying yeah. to decide if they wanted to... They knew they weren't going to get to Azalea this arrow, and they know it's an arrow on top because uh, they used scout targeting themselves. Yeah. Um, this is Red in the Ledger for 11, which is not an easy cover, but if there's a zero starter in Arsenal, this is a fairly comfortable spot for Dromite. Also, so this, yeah, go ahead. Hmm. Um, so this has got to be D-Rex from them, and I think the Red in the Ledger is going to go through, which also means inertia. Wow. This is Inertia's about good. as good as... Yeah. This is a good spot for Azalea now. It is It is kind of difficult, right? Just like in the last game, how Bravo was able to like chip down at their health total. Uh, Dromai was also yeah. able to chip down at uh, Azalea's life total in this game with all the little Ash Wings. And so they have this life mm -hmm. buffer to when Azalea does throw a big attack, they can kind of ignore it in a way. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we're just going to play a Dune Breaker. It gets popped. The red Battlefront Bastion uh, coming out of the sideboard as well from Azalea. And Dromai doesn't Arsenal, which is very interesting because they were left over with, I think, two cards? Oh, Inertia. Excuse me. Um, they had Inertia from the Red and the Ledger. I, I forgot strange about that it. strange that they decided not to cover that. I wonder if they were just like unable because of no blocks or something. I don't think we got to see... Oh, this is neat. So we get to see the sedation shot. I assume yeah, it's going to be snaps be... into bracers or maybe duct tape. Yeah. Snaps, bracers, probably infecting shot, I think is the load. Fatigue shot doesn't seem. Fatigue shot, maybe. We've seen uh, dune breakers, sure. Okay, um, so they just went with death dealer. Maybe they were looking to see if uh, oh, they can find then... a card off top. Oh, but they did get to Was dominate. Is that a blind them. Azalea? I don't know if that was a blind Azalea or not. I'm not 100% sure. Wow. But they find a Merkmire off the top. Five dominate. Can't be prevented. So I assume that covers... Sand cover doesn't do it, if they had one. Sand cover, sand cover and Oasis are not live. Um, but this they get to live with just one card out of hand given for it. Um, oh, and it's a rabble. <laughs> and then rabble to start is not what you want to see. There is a fighting spirit in hand. So it's going to be... I don't know if it'll I don't think it'll be one to one. We see three arrows in the hand. So I imagine one of them will get put in front of this rabble and then the first Ashwing will be popped. There's a lot of bracers on that turn. It was Snap's Death Dealer yeah. load. Azalea flip. Okay. So we do still have bracers, which is actually fairly important considering we have this Bolton shot in hand. I don't know if we're gonna get I don't think we're gonna get to use this Bolton shot unless we Azalea pump off the top though. This game's much more of a back and forth than the last one, right? Like yes much closer it, it's yes it's kind of requiring azalea to hit the poppers here and there um some of these poppers have come in pretty clutch we're gonna give two cards here and then huh. we pop the ashwing so this stays this keeps us at five which lets us take a zero for four to start our next turn if we need to it does mean i think we go off an arsenal unless we want to like rags this bolt and shot in to try and dominate it Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, that's actually a really good idea. So you, you rags the Bolton shot, and then you can Azalea to put it in Arsenal. Oh, that's kind of yes. clever. So it's going to be four Dominate is what we're looking at. And if we... So if we found a front pump also off the rags, this would have been seven Dominate and would have been almost certainly game over. Oh, there with, are Sigils in Oasis. Uh, that one would be with Go again, but no cards do anything. And he that's has true. the Sink below. Well, he had not Death Dealer. Didn't Neither did... No, no, that doesn't matter either. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, he had exactly the sink blow to cover the four dominant. Wow. Live. And now he has three cards to come back with. Oh, no. Was, oh, I, wow. Okay. Emissary of Wind, right? So this is a newer card from uh, Part of Miss Fail. Uh, when it attacks, mm -hmm. you may put a card from your hand on the bottom of your deck. If you do, this gets go again, which is kind of yes. similar to another zero for four from a couple other sets. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's another, it's trying to be a zero for four starter. It's a little bit less efficient because you do have to give up another card from your hand. You don't always, given some of the cards I've seen with the Oasis and Sinks and, uh, Sigils, this isn't, the, uh, 
terrible. Sigils are probably slightly better starters, but like if you're stuck with 2D reacts in hand because of uh, whatever their playing line was, you can still bottom one of them and not just sit on it. Ooh. Seek the Horizon was the other card I was thinking of. Yes, Seek Horizon. Interesting. Oh, that's so we're nasty. just going to... Okay, so this is just they're they're swinging all the Ashwings after emissary, and then we're gonna send his dust up here, threaten another Ashwing four on a breakpoint at one. So this will be two cards, and this is this is spooky. Ooh, what's his alias arsenal? I believe it's a blue spire sniping. That's not the best. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's a read the gla- oh Ooh, wow oh no wait. Okay, so read the glide path. I think that's uh, off of the blind azalea, and with that yep. in arsenal and the other uh, non-attack action, other and there's pump. nothing to do but pass the turn. Oh yeah. no! And now, as fly another rake, no popper. Not even gonna bother. Yeah, we're just gonna take the arcane, and oof! Ouch. So that wraps up game two. Kevin, do you have any final thoughts on the match as a whole? Um, these games were all about pressure. Low life totals make for... Uh, it, it, the sooner you not just like can present lethal, but like every turn that you go up just like a little bit matters that much more when you start at 20 instead of 40. Mm -hmm. Like, Dromai's recurring advantage, Bravo just like leaking one or two on cripplings that don't hit aren't dominated and just maintaining a little bit of tempo and value and like e even pop popping the heart and cross trap just for the two resources to keep an ex keep the zealous belting and set it at an arsenal for a turn was like that was actually kind of perfect big, yeah. For, yeah that was that was perfect for these kind of low health formats where tempo where every hero can get tempo because their life total it's so much easier to threaten their life total yeah. Well, John moves on to play against either Arnix or Tempa in the semifinals of the Clash Bash League. Uh, we were William and Kevin from Pit Against, the Table Pits Live Flesh and Blood call-in show. Make sure to tune into the rest of the top eight of Clash Bash right here. Bye. Bye.